Okay, on to step four. Now we're going to select our character's catalyzation. And what you are, are staring at here is the Circle of Eight. This is the magic system in the Magitek Chronicles. So the catalyzation that you're going to select is going to correspond to one of the aspects on this inner circle here. So life, air, dream, fire, void, earth, spirit, or water, one of these. If you are a true mage, you get to pick two, and this is vital. They have to be next to each other. Yes, it is possible for you as a mage to pick, let's say, fire and water, but you wouldn't do that because you lose access to the greater path. So if I pick void and I pick fire, I unlock destruction. If I pick dream and fire, I unlock divination. As a true mage, if I start out with dream and fire and I later get void, I'm unlocking destruction. So you can see how mages can get two or even three greater paths over their careers and become very versatile and very powerful if they do it correctly where they're picking. But for all mages, what you choose matters a lot. If I am a spell sniper, I have some options. I could do a Void Bolt, and I could disintegrate people, and I could be the, the, the killer. But I could also do life. It's opposite. I could be a healer. I could hide on a roof, like, two blocks away from the rest of my party, and I could fire healing spells at people to keep them alive and, and just be a healer you can't ever really deal with. So you have options. You get choices based on the type of magic that you are interested in playing, and I'd encourage you to take a good look. Magic, though, is not the only type of ability you can get from a catalyst. Some people don't like the idea of spells. They don't want to have spells. They don't want to worry about that stuff. And they actually don't have to. You can pick other catalyzations that will give you powers. Like, let's say you would just want to be kind of a warrior who rolls around with a big, gigantic, you know, two-handed axe and cuts people in half. You could instead get an ability that would support that, like, say, Gift of Osmium, which would make you much tougher and say so be harder to take down. So what you're doing when you're selecting is looking first at the aspect, what am I most interested in, and then you're checking out the powers. And I'm going to go briefly over some of these, but probably not all of them. If I was to choose life, life magic is going to be the number one pick because all magics, like you know any type of magic, is going to not only give you access to that spell list, but also some additional spell pool and resistance to that particular aspect. So if you run into other life mages, they're going to be less likely to be able to hurt or affect you. And then finally, when you pick a type of magic, you always get the Bolt spell for free. So you get a lot for getting a type of magic. And for the vast majority of characters, whenever you get to select a catalyst, if you don't already have the magic in a given aspect, you're probably going to want to take it. So if I was traveling in the world and you know I came to a life catalyst naturally and I didn't have life magic, I would absolutely take it. And I would only consider things like the Touch of Shia or the Vanity of Shia if I already had that life magic. But hey, if you absolutely want to be as hot as possible and don't care about life magic, you could spend your catalyzation to get plus one appearance. And this is super humanly beautiful. So this will actually go over five. You'll be a six appearance. You'll be superhumanly, divinely beautiful. And of course, if through the course of your character's career you've already gotten life magic, you, nothing can stop you from also getting vanity or shy. Like you definitely have some options depending on what catalyst you hit through your adventures. But during character creation, we're making that all-important initial choice. And you can see some of them are very cool abilities, like Ascend of the Dragonflight is going to grant you flight at will. So if I'm just a normal human, I can just choose to fly. And, and that's a super useful ability in some situations. But in most circumstances, I'd rather have air magic and be able to fire a lightning bolt. So I'm going to keep scrolling here. But you guys can probably go through this on your own and take a look at what all of these catalyzations do and to figure out which one of them is going to meet your needs. I would encourage you to choose carefully and do some reading. This is a very core choice because, again, it does influence what your base powers are and what type of magic and spells you have access to. So anyway, guys, that is a, a very brief look at the catalysts. That's kind of how you select one. If you are anything but a true mage, just pick one of those in character creation and record it on your character sheet. And just for a look at what that looks like, here's the character that you guys have been seeing me build. This is second. Let's uh, blow that up to full screen. Okay. And under catalyzation, I am recording life magic. So that's what I'm taking as my one catalyzation. That is going to grant me a life bolt spell. And when we choose our spells, I'll actually fill in this information here, but I want to show you that in that video. But I am recording since I picked the catalyzation, everything that it gives me. 
when we calculate our spell pool, I will have three more because I did choose that life magic. So that's how you pick your first catalyzation. If you were a true mage, you would choose the second one in addition to it. If I picked life as the first one, I would almost certainly pick either water or air, as if you look at the circle of eight, water and air are adjacent to life, and you want those adjacent aspects. So there you have it, guys. That's how you do your catalyzations. Let's move on to spells.